Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Ordnance Lab. I'm Jake, the mad scientist, and Wish.com Jim Carrey is behind the camera, finally putting, putting him to good use. And today we have a fun, safety-minded video on blasting caps. And I think, you know, I know you think you're thinking, oh, safety. Uh, if you were in the military and you ever had to do a safety stand down, the horrible. Well, this is not that. We're not going through hours of PowerPoint, and I'm not going to bore you. Well, hopefully I'm not going to bore you. But as you can see, we have this dummy here, and, well, you know, he's missing his body. Well, that's, that's a horrible shame. And uh, we're going to be using him as a demonstration on what happens with blasting caps. So we prepared several blasting caps here, and you may have remember these from our first video on blasting caps, going over the history and how they, you know, what they are composed of. Well, this is going to show what they can do when used improperly. So we have several different demonstrations, four to be exact, showing uh, the destructive po uh, power of a blasting cap. So we'll first go over one with uh, that's uh, lit off by heat, and then we'll do one demonstrating on some wood, and then uh, we'll have a demonstration with some mannequin parts. Uh, you might remember this one from some previous videos. This is the leftover one we couldn't really use. But and the idea is from this one is to get a better idea. A lot of people asked on, on Reddit and as well as on, on the comments, if we could see what these blasting caps can do, um, I believe one video, I can't remember who did it, did a uh, gelatin test of a blasting cap. And, I mean, that's a good, uh, it's a good analog to measure uh, ballis uh, ballistic performance of a projectile. But it doesn't really show what a blasting cap can do because it's not the same as a projectile, all right? It's a, uh, con it's a small container of explosive, and that's not the same as a bullet. So what we're going to do is see what it can do in more, uh, how would I say, direct comparison, and that's what the mannequin is for. Now, for this video, we have to get this out of the way, sponsorship. Uh, I know it's annoying, but this one's brought to you by uh, Global Ordnance. Uh, be sure to go check them out. They got a whole bunch of fun stuff you can buy on there. Um, link will be in the comment section. Uh, be sure to uh, go over there and use the link, because whenever time you use that link, it helps us out. This thing is not cheap, and we definitely don't do it for free. So now that we got out of the way, let's get on to this testing. Voila, the Ordnance Lab Mark I non-electric blasting cap, as seen in many previous videos where we use them to set off all sorts of explosives. In a previous video about blasting caps, we went into detail describing the history and composition of blasting caps. For this video, we'll do a quick recap to bring everyone up to speed. Here is a drawing showing the internal composition of a non-electric blasting cap. At one end is an opening called the fuse well. This is where a pyrotechnic fuse is inserted and then crimped. The fuse eventually discharges a flame spit that ignites the next portion, a flame-sensitive initiation compound. This could be a variety of compounds that are extremely flame-sensitive. A common mixture is used in many commercial and military caps is lead stiffenate and barium chromate. A very small amount is used in the range of milligrams. This compound will combust and ignite the next part which is the primary explosive. Much larger in quantity over the initiation compound and usually composed of a high-performance primary explosive such as lead azide or DDMP. This primary explosive will detonate and set off the last part of the blasting cap, the base explosive. The base charge is normally a stable explosive with a high detonation velocity such as RDX or PETN. To prepare a non-electric blasting cap, pyrotechnic fuse is inserted into the fuse well and crimped into the cap with a plier-like tool called a crimper, as seen here. Many other crimper tools exist depending on the manufacturer. Here are three of the caps to be used in this video with our factory crimp. Notice the crimp is towards the opening of the fuse well and not towards the base of the blasting cap. You always want to crimp along this region of the blasting cap and nowhere near the explosive portion. The reason is very obvious. Crimping along the explosive portion of the blasting cap would result in the cap blowing up right in your face. Compressing explosives into blasting caps is a risky operation, but is done safely like at our facility. The main explosive to worry about if you were to crimp into the explosive portion of a blasting cap is the initiation compound and the primary explosive. Here we have a small amount of lead azide, the industry standard in primary explosives. The smallest quantity of lead azide readily detonates making it ideal for blasting caps. It also has a relatively high detonation velocity of 5180 meters per second. Lead azide is flame sensitive, friction sensitive, and impact sensitive. Very typical for primary explosives and the very reason why you don't want to crimp into the explosive portion of a blasting cap. It's also really toxic on par with cyanide, which means you need to handle it with extreme care, as with any explosive. Our first demonstration is the flame test, showing how readily a small amount detonates when exposed to a flame. The second test is the friction test. You can see it doesn't readily detonate. We store lead azide in a wet status to ensure it does not accidentally detonate when in storage, and this fraction was still a bit wet. The final test is the impact test. 
striking the previous amount with a hammer causes it to detonate. It is hard to hear over the ringing of the witness plate, but the detonation was quite loud in the lab. Now for our first blasting cap test. We made a simple frame to suspend a blasting cap above a candle. We will light the candle and see how long it takes to cook off the cap. This will give us a good demonstration of how long it takes for a cap to detonate when exposed to high heat. We increased the playback speed of the video here, though it is hard to notice. You don't have a visible reference point other than the bouncing of the flame. Otherwise, you would have to sit and watch a candle slowly roast the cap. It took a total of about 1 minute and 3 seconds for the cap to finally cook off. For our next test, we will set off a blasting cap in a block of wood we had lying around the lab. We placed a tape measure next to each side of the block so you could see roughly how large it is and give you an idea of its size in comparison to the blasting cap. We then drilled a hole into one side of the block and placed the cap in the block, set it outside, and lit the fuse. Will the block survive? Well, let's find out. As we slow down the video, you can see the blasting cap annihilate the block and sent pieces flying everywhere with a loud report. This was the largest piece that survived, and you can see here where the detonation occurred. It was thrown about 10 meters away from his original position. Next, we have a mannequin hand to show what would happen if you foolishly held onto a cap with a lit fuse and let it detonate. Why would you do this? I do not know, but I'm pretty sure it's happened before. We stuck the hand in the ground and attached the blasting cap to the palm. Let's see what the cap does to the hand. The slow motion video here shows the cap destroyed the hand as predicted. No surprise there. Sure, the hand is made of hard plastic and a real hand is made of bone and tissue, but the result would be roughly the same only with a large red mist present. For the final demonstration, we have a mannequin head to demonstrate what would happen if you were to set off a cap in your mouth via crimping it with your teeth. Why would anybody do this? Seriously, why would anybody do this? The answer to that question eludes all of us here at Ordnance Lab. Those that decide to do this are definitely recipients of the Darwin Award. Anyways, let's see what happens. We all knew the head was going to get totally wrecked by the blasting cap. You can see here in slow motion it got torn to pieces without effort. Now we realize that this head is made of plastic and a human head isn't. Live tissue is far more dynamic and would have performed differently than hard plastic. Regardless, having a cap go off in your mouth would have you either needing a ton of plastic surgery or a closed casket funeral. The lesson to take home here is, use professional crimping tools, don't crimp blasting caps with your mouth, and don't mishandle blasting caps. Well, that was a blast, <laughs> pun intended, right? And as you can see, there was not much left of the head. There's only a few pieces here, right? The hand got left to just a, you know, the wrist, and we found a little bit more of that. And oh yeah, here's the the respir uh, the breathing hose from the head. It got flung about a couple meters uh, away and and, that, and uh, what was left of the wood was just you know splinters it, it left the, the the field with this lovely cedar smell that's going to linger for a little bit it's great uh, basically aromatherapy but as you can see these blasting caps despite being small pack a lot of punch and that's just it is that people tend to take these uh, the blasting caps uh, they treat them as toys or as firecrackers which they're not obviously and you know as allegedly as the marine you know when he tried to crimp that blasting cap and take off his jaw uh, you know, it, it, not understanding what these things can do can, you know, really hurt you <laughs> or take your, uh, take your head away. Um, now, of course, your head is not made of rigid plastic. You know, your head has tissue, fluids, your brain, skull. So, you know, a blasted cap uh, blowing up in someone's mouth is not going to perform the same as a rigid CPR dummy, but it gives you an idea that these blasting caps can definitely do some serious damage. Not to say that you want to survive, but you're probably not going to be winning any model contests. Or, in the case of your hand, it will totally take your hand off. Of course, confinement matters. A blasted cap blowing off up on the surface of your hand is not going to be the same amount of damage as holding onto it. But I still don't want to hold a blasting cap in my hand while it's lit. That's just, I, there's just no reason for me to do so. It's idiotic. And it, this was a big problem back in the day. I remember uh, my dad telling me, and as a kid, he used to find blasting caps in, in, back in Indiana and in in, uh, at mining sites. Uh, the blasters would leave them about because they really just didn't care. And it actually found a video, uh, well, I don't know if it's on YouTube, you might be able to find it, where this kid found a blasting cap, and it's like a 1950s PSA that you would see at a movie, and the kid goes up to a sheriff and goes, oh, I found a blasting cap, and the sheriff's like, oh, son, you gotta be careful. Well, 
I'm not going to treat you like a little kid. You're, I'm going to assume that everybody's watching here is a grown adult and has a uh, rough understanding that these are not toys. And that if you're not, gonna, if you find a blasty cap, you're obviously not going to try to put it under a candle or mess around with it or crimp it with your teeth. But I hope you found this video interesting, as informative, uh, and also because uh, we found it really fun to do. Um, it, we always like to make these videos to show, you know, what the the, the left and right limits of what, uh, explosives are and how to handle them safely. Right? There's a lot of stigma around explosives, and we're trying to break up a lot of the negative stigma around it. Uh, special thanks to uh, Global Ordnance for sponsoring this video. We appreciate that, you know, because uh, this is not an expen uh, a cheap uh, operation. We have rents to pay, bills, and uh, also uh, we, remember we have to dis dispose of all our wastewater from our production of explosives. And that's not cheap either. Uh, to our patrons, thank you so much for supporting us through there. Uh, even one dollar helps. We take donations through Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, Dogecoin, <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, all types of cryptocurrencies. Um, and <clears throat> uh, also through Venmo, PayPal, and there will be a link in the description also um, uh, for if you wish to uh, help us out uh, uh, for through donations, right? Uh, but thanks for watching, and stay tuned for our next episode here at Ordnance Lab. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.